Are you trying to figure out how to get things done? Are you trying to look for knowledge that can actually help you do something, be something, be better at what you do? Hi, I'm Joyce Mbaya, founder of ZD, where we provide affordable online courses for Africa. This is the place for you, the ZD Podcast, where we have inspiring conversations with amazing people. And the ultimate goal is to help you know more so you can do more. Teamwork. What is teamwork? And when you guys think about teamwork, the first thing you think is uh, we're going for another training where we'll have to run around and bond. But teamwork is what it is, working together with a team. And it goes beyond you guys going for field trips and things like that. It goes into every single thing you do in the office and how you work with each other. Now, teamwork can be challenging because people can be challenging. People are very different. Some have so many issues where you're laid back, you're wondering what's wrong with this person. I can't work with this person. But in order to have really good teamwork and work well with people, it all has to start with understanding the different personalities, what your personality is, and how you can understand each other because now you understand the personalities, the weaknesses, the strengths, and then how you can work around that. So in this course, we're going to talk about teamwork, what the personalities are, the different sort of people, and the different little tools that you can use so that you can build teamwork with your co-workers. So we're talking about teamwork. And the first thing we're going to talk about is life is a theatre. What this means is just like a theatre, there are people who have different roles and completely different characteristics. And the place we get this wrong is sometimes you think that people need to be like you for you to understand them. Or sometimes you're just bored and like, ah, I can't figure out this guy. But life is a theatre, there are very many different people. So in this video, I'm just going to touch on a few of those guys and you know them. So first of all, you have the socialite. So this is the person who always knows where things are going down. And by socialite, it's not in the Kenyan context of Akina Vira Siddika. This is just the person who knows where the things are happening, they're connected. So they know where the party's at, where the new joints are, where the best restaurants are. It's just that guy who knows things. Then we have the know-it-all. The know-it-all are the people who you cannot win an argument with. It doesn't matter if you are right. They know it all, therefore, you'll just lose the argument because they're very convincing and they'll talk about their point and they won't give up. So that's a know-it-all. Then you have the dictator. Now, the dictator is the guy who is very aggressive. So when they tell you to do things, you do them. You don't want to do them, but they're very aggressive and it's kind of scary. They basically dictate how people should do things, how they work, and it's just their nature. They're very crass sometimes. And then you have, of course, the techie. Now, good people, the techie are the people who fall into their own world because they're just coding, they're usually more introverted. And then, of course, now you have the Casanova. Now, Casanova is not the guy who's constantly hitting on everyone. He's just that guy who is so smooth. That lady who will talk to you, just, you'll do what they want, and you, at the end of the day, you realize, why did I do that? It was not my responsibility. I don't even know why I decided to help, but it's because they're so smooth, they're able to kind of manipulate you. And that is the Casanova. Then you have the overachiever. These are the guys who they want to do things to the next level. Everyone is doing them at one particular level, but the guys who want to throw things out of the water, make things extra. And those are the people who create a bit of competition in the organization. Now, these are just a few of the people who you find in your office space. And of course, you know some guys who all you have to do is describe them in one word and everybody knows who that is. So that's just life is a theater. There are very many different people. And in the next video, when we're talking about personality, you're going to understand why people are the way they are, why they act the way they act, their strengths and their weaknesses. So click on the next video and let's go learn about personality. Personality. What is personality? So you've been hearing this word being thrown around. Mara Geza saying, I'm an extrovert, I'm an introvert. But personality is simply that awareness of knowing who you are and why you are the way you are. And this is actually has roots in science. So it's not just pulling strings and saying this person is this particular way, but there's an actual psychological reason why people are the way they are, how your mind works, and how this affects how you relate not only with people around you, but the world at large. So in this section, we're going to be discussing personality and there's very many different avenues we can take, but I would recommend taking a test from 16personalities.com. 
that gives you a clear cut thing for your personality how you are in relationships in the workplace how you'd be as a parent in terms of personality but in this section i'm going to focus on the easiest the four you've heard about which is the sanguine the choleric the phlegmatic and the melancholic now it sounds kind of funny like latin latin names but i'm really going to make it very simple and at the end you'll understand where you fall and why you are the way you are so when we're talking about personality i'm going to talk about the temperaments now temperaments fall into those four categories but we're going to start with the two first who fall under the extroverted area extroverted is people who have no problem speaking in front of crowds talking to people interacting with people they're very charismatic so we're going to start with the sanguines now sanguines are the happy people these are the guys who roll into an area if it's in a party they're the ones who are talking to everyone they're loud they're happy they have no problem making friends making those connections it's very easy for them they're very talkative make those friendships and connections really fast now that's a good thing with them they're good with people they are people's people but the only problem with sanguines as well is sometimes you can be a bit weak-willed in terms of if something bores you after a time you jump on to something else because you need that excitement to keep you going as well. Now that's just a bit of the weakness for the sanguine side. Now the choleric. Cholerics are also extroverts in that they relate with people. They have they're very confident. They're not shy or in keep quiet a lot. So they're very charismatic. Now cholerics are good because they get the job done. You tell them to do something, they have a plan, they'll come, they'll get people moving, doing things. The only disadvantage is for the choleric that they don't have the people skills, which means they'll make you do what you need to do and you'll be very effective in doing it. But they might crush your spirit, they might be a bit rude and they might not think about how their words or their actions are affecting you. And that's for the extroverted side. So remember, for the extroverted we have the sanguine which are people people life of the party happy go lucky friendly they get a crowd excited but sometimes they don't have follow through or they might get bored and move on to something else really quickly without finishing what they started cholerics who go through the whole process but they might step on several feet they might crush your spirit you might feel ah this guy me i don't want to be in his team He's usually so rough with us so that's for the extroverted temperaments All right, so we now we know about the extroverted temperaments and how they are. Now we're going to move into the introverted. Now these are the people who they usually more quiet, they keep to themselves, they only start talking to you if they've gotten comfortable with you. That's the basic description for an introvert. Now when it comes to the temperaments, there's the two sides who are introverted. Now the first is the melancholic. The melancholic is that person who they feel things deeply. They usually are a bit artistic, creative, they're perfectionists. So when they're doing something, they want to do it very very perfect and they feel their emotions more deeply. Now good thing with that is if you're creative and you're passionate about what you do, they'll give you 110%. The problem is they can be very temperamental and the emotions can throw them off sometimes. And the perfectionism is usually a problem because they'll try and do something perfectly whereas you want results they're determined that they want to do things until it's perfect the way it's supposed to be then they'll give it to you these are the people who they don't rush me i'm doing something i'll give it to you when it's done and it's going to be good so that's the melancholic then you have the phlegmatic the phlegmatic are very calm they're very loyal they're relaxed they're easy to relate to they can have conversations with you they build deep and lasting friendships they're very chilled and very laid back they're really really good listeners now the problem with the phlegmatic is they won't be outright if they are mad or if something has gone wrong they're what we call the passive aggressive people so sometimes they'll give you a comment and you think back you're like hey hey that doesn't sound like it was a compliment ama hey were they upset so you can never really know they're very passive aggressive Now when it comes to the introverts you deal with them differently but just to understand for the temperaments we had talked about the extroverts earlier who are the choleric and the sanguines now we've talked about the phlegmatic and the melancholic who are really introverted the phlegmatic good listeners good with people very passive aggressive sometimes we have the melancholic who are perfectionists but they 
feel emotions really deeply. So that's all we have for the temperaments. We're done with the temperaments. Now we're gonna move on to the next section where I'm gonna talk about that. Now you've understood the personalities, but let's talk about real life and the people you find in your office. So now you understand what the different temperaments are, their strengths, their weaknesses, why they are the way they are. But what you need to understand is you don't just fall into one of those temperaments. Usually there's the primary, which is the strongest, and then you always have the secondary personality that comes after the first. So what I mean is, if you do a test on your personality, you'll always have that one thing that is strong. So say you're sanguine, but you can be sanguine and choleric. So those are what we call the sun clothes. You can be a phlegmatic and a melancholic. So that's a flamel. <laughs> it's very weird. But the thing is, you're never just one thing. Even if you have a stronger characteristic, a stronger temperament, there's always a secondary one that comes right after that. And that's how you know the combination of who you are. So you're never just one specific thing, you're a combination of different things. Now, I know you're all wondering, uh, so now, how do I figure out if I'm really these things, if this is actually my temperament? So in the next section, you click on the worksheet, which you'll download, and just go through it. It's just those little tests that you take, you answer a few questions, you add up the marks, and at the end, it will show you what your strongest temperament is, what your second strongest temperament is, and it will help you understand what your personality is. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So you can do it, encourage your teammates to do it, and you can all figure out where you fall in terms of personality, and it will help you understand why you are the way they are, why you are the way you are, and why people are the way they are. So that's it. So click on the next one, download the worksheet, take five minutes, fill in that nice, simple little test, get your results, and you'll figure out what temperament you actually are. So we have gotten to the section for people skills. But before that, I hope that you've actually downloaded the worksheet, done your test and figured out what temperament you are. Because now in this section, we're gonna talk about those skills that you need to be able to interact with the different personalities so that you guys can work together as a team to make it much simpler for you. So of course, as we're going into people skills, the first thing we are going to talk about is communication. Now, I know you've done the communication video, communication is talked about, communication, but it's because it's very, very important. Now, the thing I'm going to highlight right now in communication is, usually when we talk about communication, people think it's just about the talking, and we've spoken a lot about how you interact with people, but communication also falls into the section of actually sitting back and listening to what people are saying, watching the way that they're acting, so that you can understand how they are and how they interact not only with different people, but with you. And that's important for different personalities because you'll find they're choleric, they're very aggressive. So for them, you have to actually be verbal and say what it is that you mean and listen to them when they're speaking because they like to be heard. The same thing goes for the sanguines. Sanguines like a lot of praise. They like to be listened to, understood. And then they like it when you give them praise, have conversations with them. The phlegmatics are listeners. Phlegmatics just, they're very calm, introverted, but they're good listeners. So they'll sit down, they listen, but the thing with different people is you need to realize, since they're introverted, they won't talk unless they're given the space to, which is why you have to give them space, sit down, and actually just listen, and give them that little space that they need so that they can actually say what it is that they mean. The melancholic is similar to the phlegmatic as well. So when it comes to communication, you just have to read the different characters and personalities that are around you, take the time to sit down and give people space to communicate and communicate with them after understanding what it is they're reflecting about or how they're acting. So that's it for communication. In the next video, we're going to talk about empathy and curiosity. Yeah, I know you're wondering what that is, but don't worry, we're going to cover it in the next video. So click on the next video and let's talk about empathy and curiosity. All right, so we have gotten to the section for empathy and curiosity. So you, of course, you know what curiosity is, that's just being curious, like a cat, as they say. But what is empathy? Now, empathy is just putting yourself in other people's shoes. And that's a very difficult thing to do. 
it's something that people have to work on for a long period of time before you can actually try and get this right and it's constantly a challenge because people are different so what empathy and curiosity basically focuses on is it's not just about you at the end of the day and sometimes as human beings you can be a bit self-absorbed it's about you your life the bills you need to pay the dramas you've been going through and this affects teamwork because when you're very self-absorbed you don't open up your mind and realize that there are different people going through different things they have different challenges everybody is going through something and that's where the miscommunications happen where you're wondering this guy is never on time he's doing things but at the end of the day you don't know what they're going through in their personal life or even professionally so empathy and curiosity means number one put yourself in other people's shoes and sometimes this is difficult so a way to do this is as we had talked about in the previous video is sitting down and listening now as human beings whether you are introverted whether you are extroverted at the end of the day one thing that everybody wants is to be heard and to be understood so ask questions i mean don't be heavy like you're interrogating somebody but just ask a few questions and give t- people the time to open up to you and communicate and have conversations get a little insight in to what's going on with their life and that makes it easy for you to put yourself into somebody's shoes and understand where they're coming from So if you figure out this and it's usually a bit challenging but it's possible. So sit back, open up your mind, understand that people are different, try and understand, ask questions, talk to people, let them talk about themselves and that way you're not only building connections but you're able to understand where they're coming from and that is an important people skill especially when you're working within a team. So in the next video we're going to talk about something that every team goes through and that is conflict resolution. So click the next video and let's talk about conflict resolution. So conflict resolution, we've got into that part and every team anywhere where you have more than one person working on something, you guys are going to have conflict. It's just human nature. But now how do you move ahead move beyond this conflict and actually work nicely without people holding grudges having beef saying ah, i don't like that person i can't work with them so how do you figure out how to solve conflict in an effective way now usually there's usually a bit of a challenge for people in solving conflict and that's because they don't know the steps that you need to take so of course you're told ah sit down together and have a conversation and solve your problems but There's usually a process. There's a science to the magic that happens when a conflict is resolved. So let's talk about conflict resolution stages. The first step is setting the scene. So you've had conflict. Now, usually the thing that works is getting away from the area where there was that conflict because of course it's still carrying that energy whether you like it or not. The specific area reminds you of the conflict. So set the scene probably away from where there was conflict. The next step is gathering information. So the main problem with conflict it starts from either there was miscommunication or different people didn't have different information and that's where all the beef start to come in. So whether you're mad at each other or not it's about taking the breath and then now gathering the different information. So you have to understand the situation. Where did it all start from? Because this is always as a result of things that have piled up. So you have to think critically and go back and think about okay where did this start this is how what the project was supposed to be and then this is what happened or it if it was a personal issue so you dig through until you get to the root of the problem so gather all that information do your research dig through think back objectively not with that anger in mind once you have the information now you agree on the problem So you've gathered information and now you sit down you've discussed and you figure out okay so clearly there was a problem on my part there was a problem on your part so you figured out this is what the problem was and you agree that that was the actual problem the next is you brainstorm on possible solutions and this involves a bit of negotiation so you've gone through this conflict so how do you go beyond it you've had problems with each other how do you get the actual solution so of course guys as humans we're kind of selfish so you'll be like you have to tell me sorry you're like i why do i have to apologize fast things like that but this is where negotiation comes in 
So negotiation is the next step. So you figured out, okay, these are the possible solutions. So now you have to negotiate a way out. And usually it's easier when you're on neutral ground. And you can always fall into the situations of uh, you are more wrong than I was wrong, but at the end of the day, there was definitely a problem. And the way to solve this is, of course, you negotiate to like, fine, I'm very sorry. And as a result, the other person is also apologetic. Now, a main problem in this part, this is where problems don't get solved, this last part. You figured out that there was a problem, uh, you're trying to get a solution to it, but the thing that comes into this situation is pride. And sometimes it depends on your personality as well, but if something has moved on too long, sometimes it's up to one of the parties to be humble. And if you see that situations are going too far, it's up to you to be humble. And nothing um, probably irritates another party more or makes them feel more humble than you beginning the process. So if you humble yourself, apologize, it usually results in the next party apologizing. Now, sometimes this might not work, but the main thing about conflict resolution is when you are comfortable and you're happy with how you've moved past that situation, at the end of the day, whether it will take a bit of time or immediately, the next party will also be able to mellow out in time and you can move back to the rhythm of how things were. So that's the process of conflict resolution. It's not easy, but you have to go through it. And the thing is, the more you ignore a situation, the more it's going to climb, climb, climb. Next thing you know, there's a huge fallout and nobody knows where it actually came from. That's why conflict resolution is important and those are the steps you take. So in different situations, whether it's different projects you're working with somebody, something got messed up and everybody was in trouble and now you're mad at each other, sit down, have a conversation. If it's a personal thing within the office, same process applies and this conflict resolution applies for every situation of your life, in friendship, in relationship, family issues, and at work as well. So I hope you've understood how to solve your problems and resolve different conflicts as you're going through them and working within a team. So the next section we are going to talk about is negotiation. Uh, negotiation applies in every aspect of your life. You're constantly negotiating. Whether it's before you enter the mat, that guy, that kange who is trying to tell you, ah, nipati, nah, no, nimbao, that's negotiation. It happens everywhere. Whether you're negotiating with a sibling, okay, for girls, if you have sisters on how you're going to borrow one of their clothes, a whole negotiation. And this moves everywhere, including the working environment and as a team. So negotiation is incredibly important and it's basically just finding a way to reach an understanding with whoever you're having a conversation with or basically just interacting with. Now, as introverts, I'll begin with introverts, negotiation sometimes is a bit challenging because having outright conversations between people and trying to win an argument or trying to win a project or just trying to get things done can be a bit challenging, but it's a skill that you need to hone. So negotiation begins with first sitting, having a conversation face to face with somebody and then trying to leverage what skills and where your strengths are. That's what negotiation is about. Leveraging your strengths to get what it is that you want. And this is important because it happens everywhere. Whether it's different resources within an organization. And one thing you'll always find out is resources are always scarce. There's never enough of anything. Whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's resources, which is why you need to negotiate. Negotiating is different from arguing. Arguing brings in conflict. Negotiation is just you leveraging the skills you have, the strengths you have, and trying to prove a point of why you need something. So negotiation is part of everyday life, and it's usually a bit challenging, especially if you're introverted. If you're extroverted, usually you're really good at negotiating and you always get what you want. So in these situations, you have to apply empathy. And it's very hard, especially if you're talkative, you're lively, it's very easy to overtake other people and get what you want. So take a step back and think about what you're negotiating for and if it's really, really that important, if it's life, if it's death, and whether there's an opportunity for it to be neutral and probably share resources, share time. So that's all negotiation is about, finding that balance between the need that you have and other people's needs as well. Simple. 
So in the next section, we are going to talk about the Johari window. So you know you figured out the people's skills. I hope you figured it out. What you need in order to negotiate, solve conflicts, understand other people, put yourselves in their shoes so that you can get a really good um, connection with your team members and do work efficiently. Now, the Johari window is going to teach you how to understand yourself and also involve other people in that process so that they can help you understand some things that you did not know about yourself. So click next and we're going to talk about the Johari window. So now I'm sure you're wondering what that is. But the Johari window is simply a tool. I mean, not a physical tool. It's just a tool that you use on paper. It's like something you go through that helps you understand your relationship with yourself because yes, you have a relationship with yourself and your relationship with others. And it's very, very practical. So this tool was developed a long, long time ago by psychologist Joseph Luft and Harrison Ingham. Now, as you can see, they followed the Kenyan rule of Joseph Joe and Harrison Harry. So therefore you have the Johari window and it's an actual psychological tool and it helps you understand yourself and it helps others understand you and your relationship with others as well. So in the next videos, I'm going to talk about each section of the Johari window so that you can understand it. And after that, there's the activity where you can actually download the Johari window and fill in the areas and you'll get a lot of clarity about who you are and the things you probably didn't know about yourself. So let's talk about the different sections of the Johari window. So the Johari window is basically a box with four windows. So one, two, three, four. Now we're going to talk about the first two areas. Now the first area is the open area. So the open area is where you'll sit down and you'll write information that is known to you and is also known to others. So these are things that you people probably know about you and you know about yourself so it's pretty open you can just fill in that information and it doesn't feel invasive at all now the blind area is an area where it's not known to you you don't know it but other people know it so how this works especially it's a lot of fun when you're in a team it can be a bit uncomfortable but at the end it's very interesting and you understand yourself better so people will write in that window the things that you probably don't know about yourself, but they see every day as they're interacting with you. So that's what they're going to fill into the blind area. The reason that we call it blind is because, of course, you cannot see it. And sometimes, as human beings, you're going through life thinking that, ah, you know exactly how you are, what you do. But sometimes there are situations where people are looking at you and they can probably see something if it's really, really good or something that's not so good about you. But most of the times, it's good things that you do not know about yourself because we always look down on ourselves and we're not our best champions in most situations. So that's the first two windows. So you have the open area and you have the blind area. So let's move on to the next video. We're gonna cover the next two windows. So now we're gonna talk about the hidden area and the unknown area. So what are these two different windows? So the hidden area is what you know about yourself but others do not know about you. And usually this is one of the last boxes to, f to fill and you do it yourself because you might feel like it's very exposing to reveal it to other people. So you always start with the first two windows that we talked about, the open area and the blind area. And now the hidden area is where you feel at the end when that whole process is probably done. Now, the unknown area, and I'll explain this more, is where the things that nobody has said about you or the things that you have not noted down about yourself, go. Now, to understand this better, uh, we need to know that the Johari window has 56 adjectives. Adjectives are descriptive words. So it's one word that describes either a feeling or a movement. Say, um, that person is very able. Able means that you're able to carry around, like just good at what you do, so you're able, you can be trusted intelligent, fun, caring, these are adjectives. Now the Johari window has 56 of them, which means in the different uh, windows that we had talked about, you use these specific words. So there's the words that you will use 
when you know yourself. There's the words that people will use for the areas that you don't see. There's the words that you're going to use for the areas that no one else sees, but you actually see within yourself. And then now there's the unknown area. So that is where the remaining adjectives that nobody has used, that you have not used, fall. Now, when you sit back and look at your full Johari window at the end of it, you should be able to see the areas that you know about yourself, what your relationship is with yourself, meaning how do you see yourself? You'll see the area where you see and other people see as well. And you'll also see the area where you might not know these things about yourself, but other people see and they've actually written them down for you, told you about them. And of course now the unknown area. So the three are very important. The unknown area are probably areas where you probably don't have those skills or those strengths. But at the end of it, you're able to see in a broader holistic picture, who am I, what are my strengths, and what do people see in me as well. So this is really good for teams because there's probably something somebody has been wanting to tell you, but they can't tell you because how are they going to start telling you about it? It helps that openness. And now in the next section, make sure you click on that downloadable document because that is the Johari window that you can print out or even digitally, you can start entering in all those details that we have talked about. And you can also share with other people who can fill it in and send it back to you. Or you can print it out, stick it up somewhere so that people can come anonymously and start filling those things. This is very important and it actually builds teamwork and that sort of unity when people understand each other. And that's all the Johari window is. So I hope you do the Johari window, fill it in, download it, fill it in, share it with people and understand yourself better and everyone else as well. So you made it, you've come all this way, you watched all those videos, done the activities, or I hope you have. If you have not, just go back, click on it, watch it a few minutes, do a few of the tasks on the worksheets, which will take 10 minutes maximum, and understand who you are, your relationship with yourself, and your relationship with others. So remember, in this course to teamwork, we're focusing on understanding how you work and how others work. So I hope you've understood that life is a theater. I hope that you've understood the different personalities and what your personality is and the different people skills that you require. And finally, I hope that you've understood how the Johari window works and share it with other people who are probably not in your organization so that they can also understand who they are and how to work as a team. So at the end of it, I hope that you work fantastic with other people, that you understand people not only in the workplace, but in the world and your day-to-day -day interactions. So I hope you enjoyed the course and you can always rate. Please leave a comment, a rating, send us a message, give us as much feedback as you can. And I hope that this has helped you in your ventures into teamwork. This week's episode has come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like and share, comment, get involved. Let us know what you think, what you want to learn next, and join us next time.